Welcome back to another episode of the Speak on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Developer Advocate. And look, I'm so sorry that this show has been sporadic in 2019. After I was in Tel Aviv, I had to make an unexpected trip to Milan. I know, poor me. And uh, as it stands, I am flying out in about mm, 14 hours for a flight to Sydney. But anyway, I'm also super excited about going to Sydney because the city of Seattle has had some snow this week. And I'm just gonna be honest, this city does not do well with snow. But to make up for my absence, I am wearing something that is very special this week, legit Fire Festival merch. That's right, the music influencer festival slash disaster that took the world by storm. Yeah, I was able to find merchandise and official merch at that, like this isn't even fake. And as promised, I'm happy to share this with all of you. All right, enough about Fire Festival and the weather. Let's get into this week's dev news. So first up, just a reminder that Microsoft Ignite, the tour, is taking place right now. And we just finished up stops in Milan and in Washington, D.C., and we are headed to Sydney, Australia, Hong Kong, and London over the next couple of weeks. And like I said earlier, I will be in Sydney, so if you're there and you see me, please say hello. And details for upcoming Microsoft Ignite, the tour, uh, cities and date are linked in the show notes and the description down below. And Microsoft Ignite, the tour, is not the only big conference news. So this week, we officially announced that Microsoft build will take place on May 6th through May 8th, 2019 in Seattle. And last year was my first build as a Microsoft employee, and I cannot wait for this year's event. You can sign up on the website linked in the description and the show notes down below to get updates on tickets and sessions and other information. And big news, for the first time this year, we are actually doing a call for speakers. So if you have a talk or a project that you want to show off to developers from all over the world, submit your session. Links to that form and more build info are in the show notes. In some awesome F-Sharp news, the F-Sharp Software Foundation just announced the very first applied F-Sharp challenge. Now, if you're not familiar, F-Sharp is an open source, functional, general purpose programming language that originates from the Microsoft research team, and it's used by many engineers across the globe. And so the goal of the applied F-Sharp challenge is to encourage in-depth educational submissions that reveal more about some of the more interesting, unique, and advanced applications of F-Sharp, and to help uncover some the more advanced and innovative scenarios and applications of F-Sharp that we don't always hear as much about. And so the challenge is open from February 1st through May 31st, 2019. And to enter, you can publish a new article, a news article, or an example code project that covers a use case um, or a scenario that you feel um, basically uses F-Sharp um, and, and shows F-Sharp to be essential or unique to what you're doing. And so the full um, eligibility requirements and uh, frequently asked questions are listed in the official announcement which I've linked in the show notes and description down below. And I've also linked to a Medium post from my friend Lena Hall, who's uh, helping spearhead this effort that explains more about how it all works and shows off some interesting F-sharp um, things that are already in the wild. I love seeing more of these types of challenges and community engagements, and this is great, sharp from the, great stuff from the F-sharp foundation. In some Visual Studio Code news, the Visual Studio Code team just released uh, the January 2019 VS Code update. And this is the first update of 2019, and there are some pretty big uh, changes in this release. And so one of the first big features is that when you're, in, when you're installing an extension, you no longer need to reload or restart VS Code for the extension to be able to run. And so this has been one of the most upvoted uh, feature requests, and it's great um, to see it implemented. And so what this means is that like when you install or you enable an extension, you don't have to reload or restart the editor, um, uh, which can take time and, and kind of take you out of your workflow. And instead, it's just going to work. And one of my favorite new features is a new screencast mode, which will highlight the cursor position and keystrokes uh, when you're in the editor. And this is really great for anybody who's like me, who records a lot of screencasts, showing off certain features, or for anyone, again, like me, who is frequently presenting from a code editor on stage. There are also a slew of updates to the integrated terminal, including uh, Windows Console pseudo terminal support for Windows Insiders. There's a find in, um, a find in terminal improvements. There's reflow support and more. And there's even more new stuff. It's been a long time since we've had a code update, so the release notes um, are linked down below. And you can also update to the latest version of Visual Studio Code on Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. And I've also got a link to download it um, if, if you don't already have this installed.
In some JavaScript framework news, Vue and React both had releases with Vue 2.6 and React 16.8 both becoming available this week. And the Vue team has been focusing a lot on its efforts for prototyping and preparing for Vue 3.0. So this is actually the first major Vue Core 2.x release in quite some time. And a lot of the new features um, will help lay the groundwork for what will be coming in the future with Vue 3.0. As for React, version 16.8 brings React hooks, which were first shown off back in October, to a stable release. And speaking of hooks, my good friend Sarah Drasner wrote a great guide for what React's new hooks mean for Vue. And Vue got proof of concept hook support last fall, and experimental support continues with version 2.x. But more robust support is planned for Vue 3. And so whether you use React or Vue, Sarah's post about what hooks mean is a great read. And so I've got links to the Vue post, the React post, Sarah's article on CSS tricks. They're all in the show notes and the description down below. In some Azure DevOps news, Azure DevOps Projects is now supporting Azure Cosmos DB and Azure Functions as target destinations for your applications. And so the support of Azure Cosmos DB in Azure DevOps Projects means that you will now be able to create a skeleton uh, two-tier Node.js application backed by Cosmos DB in just a couple of clicks. And links to a blog post outlining how all this works is in the show notes and the description. In some .NET Core 3.0 news, this happened last week, but I wanted to go ahead and make sure I mention it because .NET Core uh, 3.0 Preview 2 is now available. And so this is going to include new features in .NET Core 3.0 as well as C Sharp 8, in addition to the large number of new features that were in Preview 1. And so there's ASP.NET Core 3.0 Preview 2 is also released, and C Sharp 8 Preview 2 is part of the .NET Core 3 SDK, and it was released last week alongside Visual Studio 2019 Preview 2. And links to the full release notes and the downloads for Windows, Mac, and Linux are in the show notes and description down below. Over on Channel 9 and our Microsoft Developer YouTube this week, we've got loads of great content, including more episodes in the Visual Studio Toolbox series focused on Visual Studio for Mac. And over on Five Things, uh, Burke and Anthony Chu talk about five ways to build real-time apps with JavaScript. So that's really great. And over on the Open Source Show, my friend Ashley McNamara and her longtime friend Erica Baker talk about how to create, keep, and find diverse and inclusive workplaces. That's awesome. So links to all those videos are down below, and you can click on them and watch them as you should. I've been spending a lot of time um, lately using the Azure Cloud Shell, and this is why I was really thrilled to see Isaac Levin's blog post about how you can use the Cloud Shell as a dev sandbox. And so Isaac shows off how he's able to create, develop, and test his web app using just a web browser, no other tools required. And it's a great look at some of the things that are now possible using just the Cloud Shell. It's really cool. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So last year, Microsoft open sourced the original file manager that shipped with Windows 3.0. And it was a big deal for retro computing nerds, and we actually covered it on this very show. But if you'd wanted, you could have compiled the code and then gotten it to run on Windows 10. And that's awesome, but it also takes some work. So what's now even better, because the classic Windows 3.0 file manager, it's now available as a UWP app in the Microsoft Store. Which means that, yes, you can now easily pretend like it is 1990 and manage all of your files the way God, or you know, at least Bill Gates, intended. Links are in the show notes and description. And uh, let me know your favorite Windows 3.0 or Windows 3.1 memories in the comments. Well, that does it for me. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button on YouTube. And while you're there, go ahead and subscribe to our channel, Microsoft Developer, for all your nerdy content. And uh, I will see you next week when I am in Australia and enjoying the summer heat instead of what other kind of winter weather the state of Washington is like trying to force on me. See you next time.